Let us understand how to find domain range of square root functions. We have two examples here. A is y equals to minus square root of x plus 2 and b is y equals to square root of 6 minus 2x plus 1. So let's understand our parent function first. Square root x can be drawn as this, right? So it is a function which is always increasing, it is always in quadrant 1 starting from 0. Domain and range both are restricted. Domain is always greater than or equal to 0 and range is always greater than or equal to 0, correct? So the function basically is in quadrant 1. Now, we are given these two transform functions. Let's sketch them and then write down domain and range for these functions, okay? So some of you can do it. You can pause the video, solve the question, and then check with my solution. Look, let's go with the first one. Minus. Minus means this square root x will get transformed like this. Is it okay? So that becomes reflected on x-axis. So basically at this stage, domain remains x greater than or equal to 0, but the range is less than or equal to 0, right? Now x plus 2 within the square root translates function two units to left. So it has translated two units left and so we get a function kind of like this. Is it okay? So that is the function. Once you sketch this, things are absolutely clear. Right? So this is minus two. Now you can write that the domain for the function is that x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than or equal to minus two about the range. Range belongs to real numbers. Y belongs to real numbers. Y is less than or equal to 0. You should note that there is only horizontal translation and therefore the domain changes with respect to the parent function. Right? There is no translation but there is a reflection vertical and therefore the range also changes. It becomes less than or equal to instead of greater than or equal to. Now let's look into this function y equals to square root of x minus 2x plus 1. Now it's very important here to rewrite the function. I'll show you how. So let me write down here this function. We say y equals to now square root of I will take minus 2. I'll factor minus 2. Then we are left with x and 6 divided by minus 2 is minus 3. This is kind of very important and then plus 1. You know, earlier it seemed as if it is translating by 6 units horizontally but truly it is just 3 units. Do you see that part? So that is a very important thing to do before we get into translations and all those things. Well, some of you can do a shortcut method. That is, you know, that within the square root, we should always have non-negative number. That is to say that 6 minus 2x should be always greater than or equal to 0. So if you solve this, we get 6 is greater than or equal to 2x. And then when you divide by 2, you get 3 is greater than or equal to x. Or you can say that x is less than or equal to 3. Well, that gives you domain. So let me write down domain from this method. And this method is actually a very good method for square root functions. So we can write x belongs to real numbers where x is less than or equals to 3. You see that? So that is our domain. Now as far as range is concerned, we can do from here also, but we'll sketch and check later. Okay, we know y belongs to real numbers. Why? Because the line. So when we have some function which is kind of continuous in its domain, it's always real numbers. Now as you see, here range is greater than or equal to 0. The only thing vertically happening here is vertical translation by 1. So it becomes y greater than or equal to 1. So that is the answer, right? Even without sketching the function. Let's do it. Let's see how to get it after sketching because at times you may be asked to sketch the function also. So let's go with this equation. It says horizontal reflection, this minus, right? So this function gets reflected 
horizontally that means kind of like this and then we say three units to the right so three units to the right means like this do you see that okay and one unit up so it moves one unit up three units right and that is how the function should be correct and this point you know is what this point we moved three units to the right so x value is three and we moved one unit up and so we can clearly see that the domain is less than or equal to three and range is greater than or equal to one do you see that so that's the way we can do it now important thing to note here is that radical sign here so square root implies non-negative so within square root you should have non-negative what I'm trying to say is so that this thing is always non-negative and therefore we say greater than or equal to zero helps us to find the domain of the function so that's kind of very important right so I hope with this you understand how to find domain range for a square root function thank you and all the best